I wanted to talk to you today about starch. Starch. And the reason I want to talk potato, about... Two potato, two oh, potato, sorry. You are so weird. What do you mean? The reason I wanted to talk to you about starch is that uh, yesterday I had someone say to me that they're, they're just starting their plant-based journey. So they reached out to do a consultation and they said they've been, uh, they, did, they did Super Bowl where they ate all the junk on Super Bowl. And now they um, I went plant-based on Monday. Hey, Valerie, good morning. Morning, Valerie. Back in the water. Nice. Yay, nice. No, I think that's back, back in the winter. Oh, back into, oh, it does say winter. <laughs> I can't see from here. Back into winter. Well, two days above 70 is nice. That's not bad. Um, but she said she decided to go plant-based on Monday. And we've told you before that going from hardcore standard American diet, which is, you know, fat, sugar, and salt, and then switching overnight to being plant-based. 100%. 100%. is pretty aggressive on your gut. And she is struggling with that. She's struggling with, you know, the bloating and, and just her gut, because she doesn't have the gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. Her gut bacteria is the gut bacteria required to process the standard American diet. And to go 100% plant-based overnight is a challenge. The other challenges she's having is she has a friend who is hardcore whole food plant-based and has been for a long time. And this friend is telling her, you have to do this and you have to do that. And you can't do this and you can't do that. Right. And so she's just completely overwhelmed. And so she's been eating basically all fruits and vegetables and nuts and that's it. Because she's also coming from, um, from eating, from being on Weight Watchers mm -hmm. where it's very portion controlled and you do this and you do that, whatever. So she's only been eating fruits, vegetables, and nuts and seeds. And she was telling me, before I realized what she was eating, she was telling me that she's hungry and she's struggling and she can't, like, it's only been two days and she can't make it work. And so I started asking her, well, what are you eating? And I realized she was eating no starch. Mm -hmm. And so I said to her, I was like, why aren't you eating starch? And she says, what do you mean? And I said, well, sweet potatoes, beans grains like where is your main fuel your source bulk, yeah. like what do you what do you and she's like oh i don't eat carbs and i'm like no that's not gonna work that's not gonna work on this lifestyle at all so you know the thing i say and you guys if you watch us regularly you've heard me say this before we are not rabbits right. we cannot live on fruits and vegetables alone and nuts are great but they're not going to fill you up like and, and not only that but Nuts are calorically dense, which, you know, eat them, yes, but not as your main fuel source. That's not going to be great for you. Exactly. So we have to eat starches. Right. As I say, I mean, we go through a minimum of a loaf of bread like every five days. And that's bread that I make myself. And it's the dense, rustic bread. Yes. Um, yeah. that, hey, Deborah, good, good morning. Good morning, Deborah. And if you want the recipe for that, it's on rnrjourney.com under uh, Robin's Recipes. It's the free recipe that's available exactly. if you want to make Russ's bread. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm making that usually almost twice a week. Yeah, about uh, every four or five right. days, I think, we eat a loaf of bread. You and, eat more of it than I do. Yeah, because what I do is, is I'll take two thick slices and toast it while I'm trying to make whatever meal I want to make. Mm -hmm. And when I toast, I start eating that with hummus. I mean, so... Which are, is another starch. So yeah. he's eating... Bread, you know, dense, heavy, whole wheat bread with hummus, which is another starch, mm -hmm. beans. Um, and, you know, that's a great, that's a great food source right mm -hmm. there. And so, you know, I told this, this person when she, we were talking about it, I'm like, you've got to start eating your starches. And that's what's going to fuel your body. It's what's going to make you feel full. And she's like, well, I don't, I don't really know what that means. And so we started having the conversation about you've got to add more beans. And she said, well, you know, I like hummus, but I don't want to have to make it. And I'm like, why do you have to make it? And she said, well, my friend said, and I'm like, yes, if you're hardcore, you do make it. And we do make our own hummus. I said, but on the second day of your journey, don't not eat hummus because you don't want to have to make it. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you buy it in the store, it has some preservatives in it. Yes, it has some oil in it, but it's certainly better for you than Starving to death because right. you're not eating enough starch. Morning, Deborah. You say morning to death. I say good morning to oh, Deborah. I, I don't know if you did I just saw it. No. Uh. So, um, if you're at the very beginning of your journey, don't take advice from someone who's been on this journey for two or three years who isn't a coach because they don't understand how to start anymore. They just want you where they are. Right. And, and her friend was like trying to get her to do like, mm -hmm. you have to sprout your broccoli seeds and you have to make your hummus and you have to this and you have to that. And this woman is just like, I can't do all of that. Right, right. So um, we always say, I mean, it took us about eight months to get fully plant-based. Yeah. I mean, and to be honest, it was never our goal was to go from where we were, which is a standard American diet, to being 100% Kind of a Mediterranean diet. Right, right. Yeah, we were probably more Mediterranean when we started. 
And what we never said to ourselves, we're going to go, let's work our way towards being 100%. It just happened. It just happened because the more we learned and, and the more our gut bacteria changed and the better we started feeling, just we had the desire. And to our just, taste buds changed. And our taste buds changed and foods just became more flavorable, which reminds me of the, the box of Vegetables and fruits we're getting tomorrow. It's hard to go off course, but uh, yeah, we we signed up for Misfit Vegetables, so they're gonna send us a box tomorrow, right. and I don't know what's in it, so we're gonna be yeah, excited to see excited what's in We're excited to there. see that, yeah. But again, but it took us time. We didn't try to jump from one bridge to the next. We, you know, took the trail as it were. It's true. So you know, cook your grains. You know, get grains in there. Um, I since I kept going up because I started hardcore and ha had to transition into it. For it to stick. Yeah, and that's the thing. There's a transition period, I think, to make it work. So, you know, start cooking yourself some grains, whether, you know, maybe you pick quinoa, maybe you you like farro. A lot of people Brown really rice, like farro. Whole grain pasta is okay. Yeah, there is I mean, some, there's some noise around rice and the arsenic risks because you have to be careful where you get your rice, but brown rice is a good option. Um, farro, a lot of people like that, which they've never heard of it, but they try it. That's a, a wheat based product. If you're gluten intolerant, you can't eat it, but mm -hmm. farro is a, a, a nice one to keep in in the fridge any of those grains mm -hmm. are going to be really great for you and they're going to fill you up they're going to make your body feel you know well fueled which means your body's getting the nutrients you need you feel full the oatmeal we tell you all the time we, if you watch us regularly yeah. you know we eat oatmeal every day except we on have fasting breakfast. days um, yeah. russ has eaten oatmeal for like 40 years straight uh -huh. i think so you know, add oatmeal. That's an easy place to get your starch and, and start your day with it with a really good solid meal. Oatmeal with fruits and nuts and seeds in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Another good starch is sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes and hummus is a simple meal. You can pop up sweet potato in the microwave. It'll be done in le like less than five minutes, and then throw hummus on it. You know, it, mention that it's yummy. <laughs> yeah, and if, I mean, if you're making your own hummus, fabulous. But if you're not, if you're not in that place yet. Don't feel like, oh, I can't have hummus. Put hummus on your sweet potato. Now, I will say, when you go to buy hummus, try to buy the best one available. I mean, look at the ingredients. Buy the one that has the least amount of ingredients and, you know, only has maybe one oil and maybe, you know, because there are, as There's anything else, kinds, as yeah. they package things, certain companies want to make more money and they make it cheaper and, you know, those all different things. But if it's going to be way too much work and it overwhelms you and you just want to go back to eating the standard American diet, I'd rather you buy whatever hummus is most convenient. Right than to not eat this way. Mm -hmm. Adele says she loves farro. It's, it's a fabulous food. Mm -hmm. uh, bulgur is another one that you can get that's a really good food, really great starch. Did uh, you say barley already? Didn't say barley. Mm -hmm. Barley can be sometimes um, over overly processed. They, they pearl it, which means they take off all the outside husk. So it's not as a whole grain as some of the other ones you can get, but definitely better than nothing. And I think the biggest issue, and I, I've written blogs about this, I've talked to you about it, but I'm going to say it again because it's important, is as a culture, we become scared of carbohydrates. Um, we can blame that directly on Atkins and his nonsense, but you have to get over your fear of carbohydrates because they are what's going to really make you feel full. Um, if we, When we look back at the men who used to be gladiators, they ate mostly barley. Um, obviously not barley that had been milled down to nothing, but they ate barley because it made them feel good. It made it gave them the strength they needed. It gave the them endurance. the endurance they yeah. needed. So it's definitely the whole food carbs are there for you. What's Adele saying? Millet is great. Yeah, millet's yeah. another good food that is uh, can be added to things and and used as as a as a filler. So if you're feeling hungry, if at the, and we've talked about before about your nutrient density. If you're feeling hungry at the end of the day, it probably means you're not taking in enough starch. Um, get over the idea of portion control. That's another thing that people who are coming from um, Weight Watchers or any of those other kind of diets struggle with. They struggle with eating enough because they're so used to having to deal with portion control. So start adding in your, your starches and your grains. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of carbs. They're what's going to make you feel full. They're going to give you the nutrients you need. It's good. They're your good body just, needs them. I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not a question. Your body needs starches. People ask us often when we when we do talks about this and, and when we are coaching people, well, did you gain weight because you were eating carbs right away? No, we didn't. And that's because we're eating whole food carbs. Most of what people think of as carbs are Ref processed, refined, refined carbs that come in a box. And they've had all the nutrients taken out of them because nutrients spoil. And then they've had stuff put in them, stabilizers, to make it stable so that it's shelf stable. And then they probably add fat. And then they fat. fortify it too. And, yeah, then they add 
all kinds of random vitamin things. Mm -hmm. So those carbs we're not talking about. You know, cakes, cookies, crackers, things that come in boxes. White bread, and most breads that are that are on your bread rack are in the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. Are, are super processed. They're not going to have um, whole food. Yeah, regular pastas. You know, regular whole wheat, no, not whole wheat, regular wheat pastas. Regular, yeah, They've white. They've been processed to death, and they, they have, you know, their nutritional value is gone. And those types of carbohydrates or starches are going to make you gain weight. Yeah. Not to, mention, I was say, not to mention, the problem with a lot of those products, too, is they don't taste very good by themselves. So you want to put a lot of other fats, sugars, and salts on them yeah. to make them taste better. Yep. But you know, if you're new to this and you're and not, you're, I'm talking about farro and millet and all these things that you're like, I've never heard of these things. You can get them in your grocery store. They're probably where your flour is or your other grains. What did we just pick up today? We picked up chickpea, chickpea flour. Yeah, chickpea. I'm going to try and make a chip chickpea flour omelet this weekend. That's one of my goals this weekend is to try that. I also have a recipe for pretzels that uses whole wheat flour and um, oat flour. So I'm gonna try that and see how it turns out. So I'm playing with some different recipes. But what I wanted to talk about importantly today is that a lot of people when they switch this way of eating, try to eat only fruits and vegetables. And they don't, they don't start really getting into the grains and the, and the root, the root uh, vegetables that are the starches. And they end up being hungry and feeling miserable and they're like, oh, this doesn't work for me. So I, I wanted to make sure that you guys understood. No, eat your starch. Yeah. And well, I mean, we have a system called whole food muscle, yeah. which is a system of a lifestyle um, that, that, we're, that we've developed. And it basically talks about eating plants. That's all plants. And that's not just fruits and vegetables. That's all the different varieties of plants and experimenting with plants. And, you know, and of course, it's adding exercise and it includes intermittent fasting. But it's just a whole process. Yeah. And, and it doesn't exclude anything as long as it comes from the plant world. Yeah, and we're creating on our website, we're creating the Whole Food Muscle Club for people who really want to figure out, you know, how do I do this? How do I do intermittent fasting? How do I get the exercise in? How do I eat this way? Like we're creating this whole plan mm -hmm. around that. And, and part of it is make sure you eat your starch. And don't be afraid of it. If you're afraid of it, then that's a conversation we mm -hmm. need to have because that's yeah. a challenge. And don't listen to the people that tell you, it's, uh, you know, carbs are the devil. Yeah, don't They're do not. that. That's not good. That's yeah. not good. Did you have anything else you wanted to add about starch? Did I include every? Oh, our, our diet's 80% carbs. I should mm -hmm. tell you that. Yes. We eat about 80% carbohydrates. And all of the um, fat that we get and all of the... Um, protein we get comes in a carbohydrate package because we get it all from plants and plants are carbs. So um, we aren't fat. Carbs obviously don't make you fat. It's not a thing mm -hmm. unless you're eating a lot of animal products and junk food carbs. Okay, I think I'm done talking to them. Are about you carbs. sure? Maybe. I don't know. Um, you guys know. That's yep. perfect. I think that's all. I think that's it. Let's go about our day. All Let right. them go about theirs. So with that, we'll say eat real food, mostly, mostly plants, plants. including your starch. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day, Bye. Guys.